we, we, we're, we're getting close. We are closing in on the NFL draft. So before we close up March, you and I here on the show, I just want to go over a few of the things we're looking for during the months of April leading up, like the storylines as we lead up to the NFL draft. So Jonathan, if you could give us some NFL music here for this to set the mood, Damn it. I want to come up music. with before we end here, five biggest storylines of draft season. So let's just go back and forth. I will start. Who else will be on the football team is a, is a huge, huge Vikings draft season story. Will there be other free agents that get signed here or are they going to go into it and just look for people to win jobs who are already on the roster and hope that that works out for them? That is, I think the biggest story leading into draft season is what spots will they need to fill by the time we actually get there or will it still be all of them? Yeah, I agree with you on that. And, and, and my, I guess one of my stories I was thinking about was how many of these guys drafted are going to be starters Yes, when, it, absolutely. Know, when football season starts. So are we talking about one, three or four? How many spots will these drafted players, this might be the most important draft that the Vikings have had in a little while. At this point, it's almost everyone they draft <laughs> will need to fill yes. a spot. I mean, it's really not an exaggeration because if... Or even the slot spot with Mackenzie Alexander leaving. Right. You know, and I think you and I would talk about last year with Nick Xavier Rojo struggling. You know, there's, can, we, can we try some of these other guys a little bit? They sort of didn't do that. Will one of those guys, you know, uh, step up? Uh, in those spots or an Everson spot at the defensive end. Right, exactly. So uh, who has to fill in? How many rookies have to fill in? How many spots are filled by then? Definitely among the biggest stories. Now, will we hear buzz of the Vikings as a team that will trade up and be aggressive or a team that will trade back and stack picks? The trade up argument is hard to make. I mean, it's a it's a good draft that has players that will be there toward the end of the first who have just as good of a chance to make it as guys who are outside of the top 10. But desperation mode, you need somebody to step in right away. Usually the 22nd pick isn't going to do that, but the top 10 pick might. Statistically speaking, probably a better idea to trade back if they were to have two or three second round picks in this draft. You can really start to stack up a lot of talent there, um, but will they show some desperation and try to move up? And what will the buzz be as we get closer and closer? I think is a huge draft month storyline. I just like uh, using one of the first in the first round at that position or position or even those three spots. I think they need to draft. And the other first round pick, I'm to going back like two seconds under oh, no. yeah, a couple, it's, you know, and, and, and moving back a little bit because we do need a whole bunch of starters, not just one or two. OK, so you broke up a little bit there and you sounded like a robot. So I only caught no. some of that. Um, well, can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah, no, you're good now. But for a second there, I, I thought that you had been attacked by Alan. Oh, well, you know, it's, you never know. Um, I, I think that one of the first, the, you know, those first, those two first round draft picks, one of them they should use on who they think should definitely be a starter, the guy they like the most in that spot for a position of need. And then I'm, I'm totally cool with that second uh, first round pick moving back into the second round and maybe get two or three draft picks to try to find some, some value a little bit lower in the draft. Yeah, I think uh, offense or defense becomes a, a fun storyline, too. Like, which way would you want to go and which way will the Vikings want to go? Will, will it be, hey, let's build up with a couple of uh, offensive linemen here for the future who or, or somebody who could step in right away at left tackle and you move Riley Reef or you trade Riley Reef or you cut Riley Reef, whatever you're going to do with him or. Will we be talking about, yep, Mike Zimmer got all of his defensive backs that he ever dreamed of, right? I, and I think maybe they'll try to you know, straddle the fence with that, but I could see them after going heavy on defense one year, heavy on offense another year, trying to rebuild the defense through the draft. That's a big storyline for me is will they try to put everything around Kirk and invest a lot here and tell Zimmer, sorry, buddy, work with the patchwork defense. I'm not sure if they will. I mean, the Michael Pierce contract sort of insinuates that they want to invest a lot in rebuilding the defense. But why do you sign Kirk if you're not going to give him everything that you could possibly give him? Well, I just have never seen in the past where Kirk has won it because of the, it's, you know, dominating offense. And it's not like Kansas City here. It's the opposite of Kansas City. I think Kirk has won 
because of defense and running game more than a, the high powered offense. And so I think you have to invest in defense more than try to have these games where you, you remember it was two years ago down out in LA, that super high scoring Vikings game against the Rams. Yeah. And yep. they lost that game and, and Kirk was on fire and the offense was on fire. I think they lose more of those football games if they don't have a good defense. No, I, I think that's a really good point. All right. Give me one more before we wrap up one more as we turn the calendar over to April by the next time we talk of things that will be the biggest discussions down the stretch of draft month. Um, will the season happen? I think <laughs> yeah. that's the no, biggest you're right. Yeah, discussion. that is that's the, the that's going to be the happen? biggest discussion for a really long time. Yeah, and well, a frustrating could, one. I have no answers. We don't have answers. Um, we don't have control. The, we, we could sit here and complain whether they should or should not have the draft or should the NFL just sort of go about their business because they sort of can. And um, um, but will the season actually happen? I, you know, every single day I start to go like, how would how would that look? How would that happen? Could they find a way to have at that time? We have millions and millions and millions of tests and it's not really an issue to get some. And the league can basically test guys before they go on the practice field or the game, like how are they going to do that if they're going to have a season? I just, we will see if we can get 65,000 people into a football stadium uh, in what, four and a half months or something like that. That's, that's to me, the, the question of April. Well, I was going to put it on a tee for you to say, will they draft a quarterback still? Because guess what? <laughs> Next month, Sage, you are not getting off the hook grinding tape. In fact, now you have to grind other tape of guys that people have known uh, that no one has heard of who might get drafted in the sixth round by the Vikings. Correct. I am. I am going to get back into a groove here. My kids are back in school. So time to find a little groove in my day. And I need to spend uh, some, uh, some time going back to when we looked at, I was looking at quarterbacks before the combine, mm -hmm. yep. go back and analyze these guys and probably less and less the first and second round guys. And maybe really dive into these guys that might be, uh, third round selections or seven day selections or whatever that, uh, you know, fifth, sixth, seventh round of the draft might be. All right. Well, I know everything in the world is terrible and scary at the moment, but we will focus on the draft and we'll have a lot of fun as we count down until the Minnesota Vikings pick potentially at 22nd and 25th on the first night or earlier or later. We don't know. So Sage, when we speak again, it will be officially draft season and I'm looking forward to it. Yes. And I just, you know, we, we, I was thinking about this this morning. We've all had a lot of things sort of taken away from us, a lot of our freedoms lately and a lot of things going on. Uh, it's made me, it's helped me realize what I do have. And one of the great things I feel like I do have is coming on the show, talking about the Vikings, talking about things, uh, uh, you know, that are a little bit outside of my life and escaping a little bit. And, and so I'm, I'm very thankful for that and, and trying to be appreciative of all the things that uh, we do have. And, and, uh, Fortunately, I have my health and my kids are healthy and and we're doing our best to, to be in the, the probably the biggest American team game we've had since World War Two. So we're all in this thing together. All right. Very well said, Sage. I will talk to you on Wednesday. Thanks for your time. Sounds good.